Can humans step foot on Mars? Or are we signing up for a very slow kind of extinction? Hold tight. This isn't just exploration. It's an extreme survival experiment. If you think Mars is a red neighbor, think again. It's a hostile world that will test every lifeline we bring. Mars's air is essentially a whisper compared to Earth's. The surface pressure is barely a fraction of ours, and the atmosphere is mostly CO2. That means no casual walks, no breathing without a suit, and no easy protection from the elements. NASA measurements put the average surface pressure at only a few millibars, less than 1% of Earth's at sea level. The cold and the dust temperatures on Mars dive to extremes, plunging to well below what you'd find in Earth's coldest places. In some spots, they can reach roughly minus 120 degrees Celsius, around minus 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Add planet-scale dust storms that can last for months and fling fine, abrasive particles across everything. Those storms aren't just an eyesore. They can foul hardware, block sunlight, and coat habitats. Radiation. Outside Earth's protective magnetic bubble, radiation is a silent predator. Galactic cosmic rays and solar particle events penetrate spacecraft and tissue, increasing lifetime cancer risk and causing nervous system and other long-term effects. NASA warns that beyond low Earth orbit, radiation exposure is a major health hazard that we still don't fully eliminate with current shielding. Body breakdown. Microgravity also chews through the body. Without Earth's gravity, weight-bearing bones lose density, roughly about 1% per month unless countermeasures are used, and muscles atrophy despite exercise equipment. Long trips aren't just uncomfortable. They reshuffle the physiology of every astronaut aboard. Toxic soil and water. Martian water exists, mostly frozen or bound in subsurface ice. But the regolith carries toxic chemicals like perchlorates that can harm humans and plants. Turning local resources into fuel or drinking water, ISRU, is theoretically possible, but it's technically demanding and must deal with contamination risks. Starship and Timelines SpaceX's plan, multiple uncrewed Starship flights to scout and test entry landing, followed by crewed flights, is the boldest bet on a short timeline. SpaceX has publicly stated plans for initial Starship missions to Mars in the mid-2020s, with crew possibilities a few years later if the tests succeed. But rocket development is iterative. Delays, failures, and redesigns can push dates back. The mission reality check. A Mars mission is a chain. Launch windows open only every approximately 26 months. ISRU must work reliably to refuel a return vehicle, habitats must shield people from radiation and dust, and the crew must survive months of isolation, psychologically and physically. Any one failure can strand people far from help. That's why many experts caution that when is still uncertain. Ambitious projections exist, but conservative estimates put crewed missions later, if technical, and human factor challenges are solved. Human costs and hopes. So yes, we can likely land humans on Mars in principle, but can isn't the same as safe. Expect real risks, increased cancer risk, long-term bone and muscle loss, psychological strain from months in cramped, high-stress environments, and the possibility of life-threatening equipment failures on the surface. At the same time, Technologies like advanced shielding, evolved exercise countermeasures, and ISRU, making methane and oxygen from local CO2 and water, offer credible paths forward, if they're fully proven before we commit people. Mars is neither mythical monster nor easy conquest. It's an engineering and human challenge layered with danger.